On the night of his 17th birthday, Mr. White knew the death of his death was nigh. He sensed it as neither an object, objective nor scientific fact, rather as a hunch, like a whisper from the afterworld, telling him that his journey on earth had come to an end. He did not fear what had come over him, nor was his face cloaked in pallor. Rather, the thought urged him to act, and after pacing a few shreds of tobacco in his pipe, he decided to put his nose into the grindstone and pair his intimate funeral. As a curious man he was, Mr. White had envisioned the moment for some time now. He opened a desk drawer and looked at, took out a sheet of which had written a list of items which were ready upon his departure. For Mr. White's death was not as much knowing what one was going to die or what one was going to die of, but how. There was nothing that worried him more than losing his composure upon his barring, the dreadful jerks and the desperate cries. When one, when those ways of dying did not congeal his personality, he went to clean and calm the world, leaving behind everything in order to the fullest extent on earth to raise heaven unfettered. Many of the items on the list that were already in place. A classic of instance, resting for two years in the crypt, in order to build his magnificent home. He picked out the most luxurious luxurious one, the imperial model built of cylinder, with golden handles and the family crest engraved on the lid. He had also chosen the music that would be played his body was carried to the crypt. After months of deliberation, he decided the piece that would be Journal Record by Joseph Han Barham Brahms. It transported him to a world of peace and priority. A few others did. The solemn, solemn, but not creepy, the ideal piece so that the guests would attend his funeral, shed a few tears when it started, end up smiling when it was over. When the voices of the chorus rise to the music of so generally, they managed to move even the hardest of hearts. The clothes he would wear, though, would be of the plainest. Though his language warranted a different kind of out there, he did not wish. He did not want, want to weigh himself down on his final journey with rather expensive suits or old models. A white shirt and black pants would suffice. He had chosen them precisely for the fact they would listen to his guests. A humble garb in contrast to his exuberance of the music and casket would lead everyone to feel sorrier for him and he saw him stuffed into another kind of suit, exalted lavishes. He did not want to be remembered as the rest of his ancestors, as old, stuffy noble. Besides, he hated when people addressed him with some of his titles of nobility. He wanted to be remembered as an elderly and vulnerable Mr. White. Nothing else. He was while checking the list, sporting a wide grin, in the light of a perfect plan. He would feel twisted when he read that the last item, good God, he exclaimed. The most important thing is missing at the bottom of the page was something else. It was written the one last item. A fundamental part of the cemetery, the reading of the last words, a cold breeze blew into the room and set each of Mr. White's white hairs at end. A window was open, and a light chill had crept into the room. He got up, and after closing the window, approached the heath. What on all will be my last words, he asked himself, while he stirred a fire for the poker. How might they come to hear them? A pang that bore the news. That end was near, penetrated his body again, seeing him like one of the coals in the fireplace. I read, I find someone who will listen to them, he said resolutely, and that desire, surrounded by silence, who would then loot his house day and night, he began his quest. Two. The next day, a newspaper in the classified section, between half price condos and scrap job offers displayed a two-page text printed in huge letters that said secretary needed responsible with a good ear no prior experience needed will be hired immediately considerable conversation urgent mr w the message simple and first glance grabbed the attention everyone read it who was this mr w what did the job exactly entail why were the outcomes required to have a good ear people that will have want some were what, what, what some were able to confirm, and others surmised, pierced together, different for information, bit by bit, they figured it out, that Mr. White could only be Mr. 
Mr. W. could only be his wife, the old Count, Duke or Marquess. No one knew for sure who lived in an enormous house on the edge of the city. The old man's dying, he's dying. He's going to kick the bucket, croak. Well, you, well it was about time. So he's seeking it. So what he's seeking is it's the secret, it's there. Well, I'm going over there. Me too. Out of the way, you dummies. I'll get in there first. Oh, after the, all these phrases, which were swiftly repeated far and wide over the country, following image was hundreds of people trying, traveling drove to the old man's house. Women, women, and elderly children of all walks of life racked at the door. House the brutal strangle, struggled to be the first to be interviewed. Flights were uh, violent and continuous in the middle of Pistols were holstered and knives were brandished. More than one person came gave way with a bullet in their leg or slashed ear. And when events on the outside, Mr. White gazed at the phone through the window of his study and was overjoyed. So many neighbours remembered him during his last days, gave him really at the list of the names of candidates who counted a, a total of more than 900. It would be impossible to rule all of them. He thought, though the truth was that, he could, was that any of them would be fit for the job, their duty would only consist of keeping him company and living with him into his death. Which, which could occur any time, and of course, I'm called as in the no trees last words. Since time always concerned it with human problems of advanced for their intimacy, Mr. White had no other choice than to pick three names at random and hastily begged Destiny to tell him who was worthy of being the keeper of his words. He went out of the terrace and entire old, loaded his appalling his appearance. Live long live Mr. White! Hooray! How young he looks!